All right, so what are SOPs and why do you need them? So let's say you're a professional and you're working in your service-based business. You might have a small team, but you're still kind of stressed out and you're still doing most of the work because everything is inside of your head. You have nothing really written out and so therefore you're doing most of the work. Now that's the usual case for most overwhelmed business owners. So SOPs, which stands for Standard Operating Procedures, they take what's in your head and they write it, it's written down on a document so that way other people can recreate the result without you having to physically actually do it yourself. Without being able to write down your processes and procedures on paper, you will never be able to systematize your business, which is what I talked about in my other video called How to Build Systems in Your Business. Which is why I suggest you watch that How to Build Systems in Your Business video after you watch this video. Now, when should you start actually crafting SOPs for your business? Now, first, I suggest you consider what kind of business do you have now and what kind of business do you actually want in the future? Now, if you like being a solo entrepreneur and you don't have any intentions on passing down your business, maybe giving it to your children or even selling your business in the future, quite frankly, SOPs might be a waste of time for you. You might have no need to actually create standard operating procedures for your business. But if you're like most of my listeners and my audience, then you likely want to build a business that you can pass down to your children, build a business that can run without you, and build a business that you can eventually sell. So therefore, you understand that documentation and SOPs are a very clear and important part of that process. Documenting your processes makes your business more sellable and scalable. I really would know because I actually work with private equity companies and one of the factors in being able to value a company in order to sell it is if they are able to optimize their operations down to like the lowest metric. I mean, if they have no documentation and the owner's actually doing everything, that actually devalues your company. So kind of keep that in mind if you ever actually want to sell your business. Now you know what SOPs are and when you should actually start implementing SOPs, let's talk about how to get started with creating them. So the first step in being able to create your own SOPs is first journaling what you are already doing. You need to be able to find clarity in where you're at in your business and what your current tasks are and you need to find out what you're doing that you shouldn't be doing already. This is an important part because I don't want you to get overwhelmed with the concept of documenting your business. You might be thinking, oh my God, Kadir, I got to do this, I have to do that. It's okay. Let's start with where you're at. That's the key part. You can start getting clarity by journaling over the next five days, everything that you're doing in your business day by day. You should be journaling what you're doing in your business. Then from that entry, you should be able to figure out what you shouldn't be doing in your business. And then based on what you shouldn't be doing, then you can figure out, okay, what needs to get outsourced or what should get outsourced over a period of time. I actually give this to my students, a Supreme Clarity Worksheet, and everybody in my resource membership is actually able to get that sheet. They can download it, you can keep it forever, and it allows you to have like an online documentation of your journal entries so you can see very clearly what you're doing, what's really happening, what's not happening, where you're getting distracted. It's an awesome tool to be able to gain clarity in your business. Before you make your SOPs and before you create your standards, you need to actually plan out what those standards are. Maybe you see in your clarity worksheet that you're doing some tasks and the way you're doing them isn't really effective if you want somebody else to eventually do them. That's the point. You want to kind of get a mirror of what's going on and maybe places you can change immediately. And then if it's actually fine, then you should actually be writing out how that task gets completed, which we're going to talk about later on in this video. A few common tasks that you can easily create standard operating procedures out of would include something like how to book appointments, how to do follow up with leads, how to schedule Zoom meetings, and how to respond to different customer service inquiries. Step number two is that you now have to set time in order to create your SOPs. This means you have to make them a priority, not just something you put on the back burner and you only do it when you're kind of in a crunch and like you're super overwhelmed and now you want to hire somebody. You want to create the culture that standards and writing down and documenting are things that you value in your business so that way your team will be able to value it too. If you're the only person creating SOPs, that also means you're doing everything in your business. You're just documenting everything. Eventually, you should be able to hire people who are better at their jobs than you. They can take you to the next level, but then they also value documentation so that way they don't get burnt out. So that way they can rely on other people on the team to help them whenever they need the help. So SOPs are not just for you. They're also for your people. And yes, that means you have to take time to make time. 
whether it's once a week, once a month, or once a quarter, if you've never actually created standards before, I need you to make it a regular part of your daily business that you're trying to do this. So that means you should schedule time out in your calendar and make it a, a, a priority that you are going to write down, you know, a task that you're doing. And it, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just putting down bullet points, something that you can build off of in the future. Now, step number three is that now you're going to record your SOPs. Now, you can record SOPs in a variety of ways. You can actually just write them down. Literally, you can open up your notes app and start typing them on your computer. You can record yourself, kind of like I'm recording this video. Uh, this is especially helpful if you have like a product-based business or a business that isn't solely online. But if you're an online business owner, like the majority of people kind of watching this video, then the best way for you to actually record your SOPs is using a screen recording tool like Loom, which is one of my favorites personally. I like Loom. It's very easy. It even allows you to kind of have a transcript of your video, of the audio in your video. And it makes it very simple for you to record and kind of move forward as well as share it with people on your team or just other people in your network as well. The important part is that we want the recording process to be hassle-free. Again, I don't want you getting overwhelmed about the process of writing down what you're doing. Just record yourself doing it. That's way better than nothing. And it actually can help out a lot more because people are more visual, but they also are a bit more tactile. So like it's easier for people to watch a video on how you get something done versus just only having a written version. Plus, if you have a team, you can easily kind of record yourself doing something, whatever that task is. And you could, especially if you're using Loom, you could actually send that link to your uh, team member and they can use the transcript from Loom to actually create the written out version. Personally, I think it's best to cover all bases and have a video recording and as actually have a written out step-by-step -step process somewhere on like a document, on like a Google Doc or a Microsoft Word document. And if you don't have a team, you can also kind of do this yourself. But if kind of writing it out is a little bit too much, then go ahead and just rely on the video recording and just categorize it somewhere. So that way it's easily available for anybody on your team. Step number four is now that you have your SOP, now you want to actually review your SOP. Keep in mind, SOPs are living documents. Um, you don't just kind of set it and forget it. They change over time because your business is going to change over time. Your needs are going to change over time. Your tech is going to change over time. Your teams are going to change over time. So it doesn't mean that you have to constantly change the process. But if the process does naturally improve, you want to actually update your SOPs. And that may mean actually re-recording a video or just editing, you know, parts of the video or adding in more steps in the written out version of your SOP. But I don't want you to think that you can just set in like that's it forever. In like five years, you're doing the same thing. Hopefully not. And hopefully things have improved uh, in one way or another. Also, while you're actually creating your SOPs, you'll probably notice that the way that you're currently getting a task done is actually super inefficient and there's a better way of doing that. And then you'll be creating your, you'll be recording yourself and you'll stop in the middle of your recording and you'll be like, um, I don't know why I'm doing it like this way. We could do this like that. I promise you that happens all the time to me. <laughs> like it's not a big deal. And it actually shows that you're starting to self-optimize, which is really, really good. Uh, so don't be afraid and don't be scared or concerned if you're starting to like record a video or write out your standard operating procedure and you see that you actually need to change it a little bit, that's perfectly fine. Don't stop the whole process, however. Go ahead and create it and then just update and add in the efficiencies or kind of just change, you know, whatever needs to be changed a little bit, but keep up with the SOP process. Um, it's a very natural thing for you to want to change things while you're in the middle of documenting it because documentation is like your mirror. You don't really notice anything on you unless you look in the mirror, right? And by the way, you want to make sure that you're reviewing the SOP and you're also trying to follow the SOP yourself. So once you actually create it, you have your documentation or you have your video, you really want to try to actually go through it and do the steps as you said in your own video. So that way you can make sure it's very clear to anybody else who comes after you and is watching the same video. So you want to make sure you're able to follow your process that you created by yourself before you actually teach it to others. And that's actually a very key thing. You want to be able to teach your processes to your team members versus just throwing them a video and saying, hey, follow the video actually try to teach them the process that'll help them in being able to duplicate it and it'll also show you if you have any inefficiencies in your current process step number five is now you have your sops now you want to organize them and actually share them with your team 
this is where you should be really, really excited because you have your recipes, you recorded it, you're like, oh my goodness, thank God, I got it done. Now we need to be able to share it with our team. But you don't want to just like send them an email, say, hey, everybody, follow this recipe, that's it. And like you, you keep it moving. No, 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 no. Um, that's a recipe for a disaster because if you have a kind of a small team and you've never used this before, you got to teach them how to actually use the SOP. You have to actually train them. So again, I know it may sound like more work than necessary, but I promise you, this is the recipe for scalability, for sellability, and for just generally having more peace of mind because you have a team that's actually able to follow your process and your procedure and get stuff done without you having to be there. So again, we have to take the time in order to make the time. You really want to organize your SOPs in like a project management tool or an online uh, file sharing tool like Google Drive. You just want to have it so it's easy for people to find. See, that's the thing. You can have all these SOPs, you can have all these videos and all these documents, but if people can't actually find it, then that's going to be very difficult for them to actually use it. And I'm hoping that makes a lot of sense. And like I said before, you need to actually train your team on this process. One way is actually sending them the video, but asking them to watch it and then to try duplicating the result themselves. If you see that your team is struggling to be able to follow your videos and follow your process, then that means your process, while it may work for you, does not actually work for anybody else who's getting the video, which happens more than people actually consider. Uh, so it's not a strange thing at all. Now, another thing I want to mention is that you might be thinking, oh my goodness, Kadira, I got to document absolutely everything. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to make this video. I got to write out this thing. And that's not what I want you to do at all. <laughs> I don't want you to get overwhelmed by the process of not being overwhelmed, okay? You want to be able to take your steps, take time into this, right? Make it a habit, but don't make it like super overwhelming and don't kind of overthink it as well. You're just documenting what you're already doing. You're writing down what you're already doing. This is how you create the actual system of it all. The other really important part about making SOPs is that you actually want to create a culture of documentation and creating SOPs like with your team. That way it doesn't become a daunting task that you got to do every single month or every quarter or however long that you actually want to create standards in your business. You want to be able to hire people who also value this because they know creating standards also helps them because that means when they want to go on vacations and or maybe they're just out and they just need time for themselves, they have other people on staff who can help them and they know those other staff are going to be able to follow their own instructions. So creating standards and creating documents in your business has to be a part of the culture. It can't just be you doing it all or else it's going to be even more overwhelming because then it really does become another thing that you have to do. So thank you so much for watching this video. Again, my name is Kadira Muhammad from Succeeding With Systems. Give this video a like, a comment, subscribe to the channel, and share this out to anybody that you know that really needs to start optimizing their business, creating systems and automation so they can actually start living their life versus just living in their business. And also, if you are a solopreneur and an online service-based business owner, like a coach or a consultant, and you're like, okay, Kadira, I, I like this SOP thing, but like, how do I take this to the next level? I invite you to check out our SWS resource membership, where we have this entire community, and I give you a ton of SOP templates that I've used in my online service-based business that you could absolutely just kind of copy and paste for your own business as well. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and click the link in the description. Now that you've learned how to actually create standard operating procedures, how about the other parts of your business? What else do you need to actually create systems in all the departments in your business? And what else does it take to get to the level of having a business that runs by itself? I invite you to actually watch my video that's called How to Build Systems in Your Business. So go ahead and click this video next so you can learn more about this process. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I will see you in this video later.